start the recording and here we go. All right, uh, welcome everybody to the May 24th, 25th uh, Chaos Metrics Model meeting. Uh, it's morning for some people and later in the day for other people. So hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, it's good to see familiar faces and, and new people as well. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, we'll take a look at, at just a few things. Um, one was, Sean, I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at this, the repository. Um, I have, uh, oh, and and I've, I've been working on making it um, on a, I've got a fork and I'm working on making it okay. uh, follow the implementation, but I wasn't able to be successful uh, before the meeting. Done. It's It's basically just, diddling with writing out the JSON <laughs> and putting these in the right spots. Yeah, I've actually got the like on my fork, I've got the folder structure in place and I'm working on moving everything into the right folders. OK, OK, <clears throat> sounds good. So but I uh, haven't done I have not accomplished it as much as I had hoped. I okay. thought I could, but I was wrong. OK, um, not a problem. So just for folks that aren't kind of following, so with community activity and funding, you know, one of the things we're just kind of talking about here is, is structure. Uh, and I think the next thing we talk about is structure as well. Um, but we were kind of following this structure of al algorithm data insight and data for how we present our metrics models. And then Sean was, this is one of the first metrics models kind of pre deciding on that structure. And I think Sean was going to kind of wrangle these things into that structure. Yeah, which is completely doable. I just did not get it done before no the meeting. Okay. What is, what, is the, uh, what is the relationship between the metrics model markdown page and the implementation? This page? Right. So community activity is the metric model, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is just the implementation here, right? Yep. Okay, and then we have a, we also have a community activity markdown file, correct? Well, yeah, it's currently sitting here. Okay. Yep, we don't have this like published as a markdown file yet. Okay, but there, there, presumably there's going to be some sort of relationship between that document and these, this implementation, right? Yeah, um, yeah, so I, I, it would make sense to me that we would probably just have the markdown file here. Okay, can a can a can a model markdown page have more than one implementation? That's a good question. Uh, I, I I think so. That's why uh, we uh, I have a proposal about the whole structure. Um, repository structure uh, structure here yeah uh for example uh, uh well, we, want, we can just talk yeah we can just talk about this maybe this will answer your question kevin we can because that is the next thing on the list yeah okay actually, yeah. This, yeah okay okay so sorry you go ahead uh, sure uh Actually, we have a little little bit of discussion in the last Asia Pacific meeting about uh, the metric model repo structure proposal. Here we realized that we have a definition of metrics model, like Kevin you mentioned, and we have community uh, activities, we have a, a community welcomeness, um, many, many uh, definition of metrics model. And also at the same time, we have the uh, implementation of those uh, metrics models so here uh, we kind of like to do some uh, categorized listen here uh, uh, my proposal or our proposal with june is like <clears throat> potential structure around ecosystem uh, actually this coming from the the papers we uh, I, I wrote uh, at early of this year i have uh, first of all how i have to thank, thank all of you for Shen, Kevin, and Matt, you read a really good and excellent paper uh, early last year. Uh, early last year, so this this uh, uh, actually I listed the reference, the last reference, 
and it's really good summary for the past 20 years uh, about open source community evaluations, the research uh, achievement. So based on this paper, I read much more um, papers related to the uh, open source ecosystem evaluations. So here I list the, the, the ones I read. So the, the first uh, paper is it's, uh, it's, uh, actually coming from the last century. <laughs> That's technically true, yeah. That's a funny way yeah. of putting it. <laughs> yeah. And also the first two papers actually they, they related to the business ecosystem. Or last the, the the first three papers related to the business ecosystem. And our uh, concept from community, I mean open source community ecosystem, actually I'm thinking of it they are originated originated from those business ecosystem concept. So I list all those papers which are very famous. Uh, in, in the research areas, um, and uh, so that's why I'm thinking of to to categorize our repos of the matrix model into three main uh, 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 folders like uh, productivity, robustness, niche creation. Which of these three items is are uh, used to describe the the whole ecosystems in the open source communities. So here for the different item, I gave the definition. Um, I have to admit that the definition of the of those items are slightly different in the different papers, but I could say that the, they they share the common part in the uh, the most of them are a shared common part. So I I gave the definition of here. Uh, so it so from the definition you can see that it's much more uh, straightforward. You can you can read directly to see what it means. So it's part of the uh, I mean the key areas of of the whole ecosystems. First first is productivity, the so efficient with which an ecosystem converts input into output, and robustness and the capability of of an uh, ecosystem to face and survive. Uh, the eruptions and niche creation, the capability to create meaningful diversity and uh, survive noble capabilities. So I I prefer to to divide our uh, matrix model following the ecosystem concept into three main parts. Uh, and uh, and to wide to wide uh, too complex structures in our matrix model repo structure, like uh, uh, lessons learned from metrics, like uh, Shen mentioned in the last meeting. So we basically just have three basic folders to to categorize the whole matrix model. And uh, we will see, we will see in the next, uh, maybe, maybe six months later or one year later, we could see how many uh, matrix model uh, have uh, have been written or created in, in in our matrix model working group, and then we we can decide do we need another uh, subfolders for each of these uh, categorizations uh, categorizations. So I give here some examples. Uh, for uh, for example, the productivity. We have code quality uh, here. The, uh, we we haven't had this. Uh, matrix model. I just want to give an example to to match with the uh, product productivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and here code quality. Of course, we have definition, and uh, we we already have, and implementations. And this implementations like uh, uh, Kevin's question: Do we have uh, more than one implementations? Mm -hmm. This possibility to to for for one metric model. My answer is yes, and uh, of course. Uh, we could have more than one implementations for one single uh, matrix model where we can put here. So, uh, so under this implementation folder, we have three subfolders. One is for algorithm uh, to uh, to uh, calculate the, the matrix model, and we have the data inside to analyze the, the result of the matrix model, and also we could have some uh, enriched data here in the data in the data folder here, 
and uh, and uh, I put three three uh, existed matrix model under robustness because I I, I think we uh, the, the, those three matrix model belong to this uh, categories categorizations. Um, and uh, and I um, we are also thinking that uh, except for these main folders, we may have some utilizations like uh, put some common things in. Uh, so I list uh, a folders called commons, where we can ha have uh, 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 three uh, subfolders. One is atomic metric dictionary. <laughs> it's a, it's a different from the metric we mentioned. Today, maybe you can just click this link, but you can help me click this link. Thank you. What I mean, the atomic metric definition is here, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the definition, uh, the weight uh, in the in the subsection four point one. Uh, we have uh, like a contributor count. We uh, the definition is how many active commit authors review participant actually in past ninety days. That's the we have the uh, we add the filter strategy in this metric, so we clear to know that how to use this atomic metric in the metrics model. It's different from the metric metric definition. I I mean because in metric definition it's kind of like system the whole concept, including the data strategy, filter strategy, and the data, uh, sorry, data collection strategy. In this, and the, the in, this, in this specific example, the values that you're providing are from a specific ecosystem, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. we should, I mean, my only comment here would be just to maybe state where the, which eco, what ecosystem we're pointing at. I imagine it's open oiler, but, um, I suppose I'm I'm not super comfortable with us assigning a weight to any of the metrics in not, the model. I think that's no, uh, that's that's why that's, I it's I from don't the want to, uh, no. Uh, <coughs> we we should uh, ex exclude this concept uh, the weight uh, in in the in the dictionary. I mean the atomic metric dictionary. We only define the uh, metric name and the definition. Okay. Uh, maybe we can call it filter definition because the, the weight it's uh, it's really a uh, need to uh, based on the different metrics model uh, background and also specifically for different communities they are different so here the weight and threshold uh, is only available for one type of communities uh, like i mentioned it's a operation operating system distributions and uh, communities so it's a very uh, customized station. Kevin, did you have another question? I think your hand was up probably for something else. Yeah, the data insight uh, folder, is that, uh, what does that document look like? That's where the visualizations of everything exist. So the okay, data, so the, the those are just visualizations. Well, I don't know that it's just visualizations, but it's the act, the thing that the end user would see, I believe. Is that right? Well, it looks like it's the notebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is uh, so it, it it is called data insight. So is there some on our end, is there some sort of interpretation that we're going to present? Uh actually this data inside including the visualization in this notebook. And also, this visualization is generated um, from the real world uh, community data. So we based on this as an example to 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 analysis the result based on the, those uh, visualizations and gave us the analysis result to to explain how it works for this matrix model with the real world data. If it's just if it's just a data visualization, then I think we should call it that. If we are providing some sort of interpretation on our end for that visualization, then I think data insight is appropriate. 
Uh, but I, I think we need to be as explicit as possible in the uh, in the folder structure. And right. we provide we provide that here, Kevin. So I have okay, the, so I have the this is that Google Doc, obviously. You know what I mean? Yep. And so these are the things that would come from the notebook. And then you can just kind of read the text, you know, like here it looks like such and such and such and such is happening. Okay, but that text is included in the in the notebook? in these documents, in these notebooks. That's it. So, okay. Yeah, so actually, is that text? That's a good question. Is is this text? I mean, it can be. It's if it's a yes, it is. The, if it's a notebook. The, it certainly can be. Actually, in this okay. data insight. Okay. Yeah. That. Oh, good. So I, I like that. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, uh, thank you for thank you for answering that question. So perfect. So then how about your other question about showing two? Like, let's say like this one is based on this data insight according to this document. And the Jupyter Notebook here is based on a comparison between community A and the open Euler community, community B. Right. So there are uh, obviously in the in the the way that these algorithms are put together, there are some uh, kind of decisions that are being made, right? So you could have, uh, so right now we're just doing Python code. So the, our target user is someone who's comfortable with Python, someone who's comfortable with JSON, right? Uh, other implementations could be R or another platform. Uh, additionally, I think there are, there are different ways that you can look at the interaction between the metrics in these models and different weights that you can look at. So I, I, uh, uh, and, and I think uh, we had said that uh, multiple imp implementations is a possibility, and I think that's a good thing. I think we need to leave that open. I think we'd have to think about, I'm totally fine with that too. We'll have to think about how that would be shown in this folder structure because right now like the data is these two json files which feed into this one jupyter notebook and it's all really good like it's, it's real world community data that provides insights in this notebook but if if we were to add even another notebook with other community data we would have to think about how we present that here you know like the data folder would contain three json files <laughs> And the data insight folder would contain two Jupyter notebooks, and we have to think about how we. Or, or what if we add an R implementation? Right. Exactly. So, like, um, I think we can figure it out, but yeah, it sounds like it'll be a naming issue. Okay. Maybe first implementation, second implementation. I I think you should stay away from the numbers. I think you should just do a natural language format. Because like, if I'm going to be looking for a specific set of examples, I don't want to see data dash insight. I would rather see data dash JSON underscore format or data dash R underscore format. I agree with Samantha. I think we need to be as explicit as possible with our naming. Yeah. And I also, um, we also mentioned that regarding the data folder and the data insights folder. I think that making the delineation based upon the type of data that goes into the folder doesn't help me as a non-coding contributor like at all, because I want to know when I go into something that I'm going to be capable of understanding what's in it. So is the what was is what's the concern here, Venya, then like what? Yeah. Well, well I put I put a few examples of what uh, you could make it uh, into the chat. Oh, in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I can put it in the I can put it in the minutes, but I kind of That'd felt like cool. that was a lot more finite than putting it in the chat was. <laughs> I like finiteness because <laughs> because this chat vanishes and I usually go back to the minutes and take a look at them after. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I figured we would just put whatever was in the minutes based upon like whether or not this would actually be a proper issue <laughs> if you could drop it in a minute that, that'd be cool okay uh, i have some questions on the repo structure well, well, one, one thing i would say is that keeping i think one of the concepts that uh, came through the metric model implementation um, 
that Yahui and his group did is you know, using JSON as a standard representation of the data. And most of the data that we get from GitHub or GitLab or anywhere else is, is going to be naturally formatted in JSON or easily converted to JSON. So keeping a common like way of storing data it may make it easier in the long run to understand all the different metric models. Or if you have multiple different ways or strategies for storing data, that creates a, a layer of confusion and complexity that isn't, I think, necessary. So is your suggestion to like strongly like, encourage? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I guess so, like, like, I guess I'm looking at like data JSON format, data R format, like R can read JSON just fine. Um, and so I would just sort of, you know, lean heavily towards making the data folder be JSON. Okay. I mean, that could be a recommendation that we yeah. definitely lean towards. Uh, CS, CSV is, is going to be really common for non-technical users, right? So that, that CSV format, uh, so you could make the case that that would be a, a pretty standard format as well. That's really easy to convert to JSON. Yeah. People will understand CSV. I could see that as an alternative. So I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I also think that if you provide all three, you've now uh, built an entire ecosystem for Vega Lite, which a lot of people use uh, very frequently uh, within Data Studio, within Power BI. It's basically like a shared open source version of all of these data processors that are already industry standard in the first place. So I think that offering it in CSV, R, and JSON is really covering all of it. Uh, could we just uh, use the... Uh, could we just do the surface of this file to know what's the format of this file, <coughs> like the uh, JSON or, or, or CSV? Okay, we clear to know uh, what's the what's the format of this data file. I don't, it's possible that we can just remove from a natural language convention the type of format because of the extension. But if we remove the type of format file from the extension, um, we still have to make sure that the folder is delineating um, what the user is expecting when they click into that folder. And that, I think that's the crux of my main confusion there. I do. Uh, I do also think it's fair to take a like a JSON first approach to it, right? So when we're building this, let's let's first focus on the that that Python uh, implementation with JSON, uh, and then but but leave it open to uh, kind of expanding this. And and I think the yeah CSV and R uh, data formats are a great place to expand and R implementation is a great place to expand. And in the future, perhaps we could even expand uh, in kind of subtle differences in the way that we look at those models. Uh, but but I think it's it's fine to focus on this structure that we have now to start with the, with the idea that we can build on it. Not did you have a my dog stopped barking. But not <laughs> you have a comment. I, I was super silent there for a little while. Uh, I have a question on the proposed re uh, repo structure which Yahoo has presented. So okay, well, and then maybe it. hold on just a second. Yes. Um, okay, so kind of from what I heard that there is from Venya, there is there's true value in, in providing support across all of them, right? For CSV, I'm looking at you, yeah, CSV, JSON. I also, um, and so I think that's 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 good. Um, my, my guess is that we're gonna get a lot showing up in JSON anyway, just to start. That's just because I'm looking at the folks that are 
kind of doing this model work with, you know, you and your team and Sean. And so we probably don't need to like explicitly limit anything, like say this has to be only JSON. My guess is that that's the only version that's just going to show up for a while. Um, uh, I don't know. I, oh, I guess if the data is in a structured format, then having JSON or CSV will serve the same purpose. But if we have like unstructured embedded objects within a data structure, then JSON is the best option. So okay. I don't, I haven't looked at the data. So maybe if uh, those who are doing it, if it is a like proper structure, keeping JSON or CSV will even in the Python will work the same way. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we should all think about this too. All right, um, Vinod, did you have a comment about this? Yes, so my question on this is maybe I'm thinking too narrow or this seems to me a too broader, like if I take a one metric model, say community activity and we have certain metrics within that, I see a community activity as a part of an ecosystem as a one model. So am I thinking of that as an ecosystem or I'm focused on the model? Like I have one model, how that model is being coded and implemented and defined are the three things. So maybe the structure should be in that direction or am I looking at the robustness of that model? No, I think community activity is the model. Community activity and that is the part of the robustness. Yeah. It's, so, it's kind of like a focus area for, to be honest with you, but it's not focus areas. I see your so hand. Gather. This is where I, I always get confused. Like I'm just taking one metric model and I'm trying to see the structure that we, uh, through which we present that model. One will be the explanation of the model in a markdown file. Yeah, hold that. One comment. will be the implementation. And what are the other things? Are connected hold that, to the hold model that comment. Thing? Because I have a I have a proposal for the template for the models. Okay. Kevin. Uh, so we do have an ongoing discussion about what a focus area is, what a model is, and what a metric is. Uh, and I I think we're we're kind of running into some of that uh, some of those issues here with with productivity robustness and. Uh, niche creation. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion that focus areas should be more context specific, rather than something that uh, describes a measurement, like productivity is kind of something that you would measure. Uh, I think for me, if it's if it's something that you can measure there, then it, it, be, it kind of becomes uh, difficult to grasp because it's uh, it's kind of different levels of abstraction, right? So uh, productivity is something we can measure and then we, we dig a little deeper and we can measure a specific thing about productivity and we can dig a little bit deeper and measure something even more specific. Uh, when, you, when, we start, when we start getting in those, those different levels of measuring productivity, it becomes uh, uh, it's a little difficult to, uh, to navigate as a focus area. So I, I would prefer that the focus areas remain more descriptive of the context, and then the models describe what we're measuring. Uh, so do you have an example? I mean, well, so uh, just that. What's that? I'm not like, you don't like, if you don't like that, what's your proposal of of a do like well right now i'm not sure that we need to have focus areas because the uh i think creating those categories right now at this early at this early step uh is i think a little bit arbitrary so we, we could we could decide what we want to measure and then decide how to organize them at a later date what are other people's thoughts on structuring metrics models into Areas, yeah, Venya. Um, honestly, if we were to get rid of that layer, 
it would honestly get rid of a layer of abstraction for me. I don't really feel like productivity, robustness, and niche creation are really doing anything for me. Um, but again, that also becomes very difficult to manage later on. So the question is, how many metrics models do we actually think are going to be necessary? And is that layer actually needed if we're not planning to use SERP like 20 models? So the concern is that that it may provide a layer of abstraction when we only have three metrics models at the moment that may not be needed. But if we remove them in two years or so, if we just have a giant pile of metrics models, that might be kind yeah. of hard I mean, the idea of a naming convention is to be able to remove any specific asset from that convention, and it will still con contain all of the data necessary for you to put it back later. Um, so if you find that it's important, like if we were to pull a metric model out and then go and mess with it, and then a year later come back and then look at the repo and be like, where do I put this thing now? then you need it because it's broken without having that address. But if the reverse is true, if you could pull it out, wait a year and put it back in just fine without that delineation, take it out. Do other people have, thank you. Do other people have thoughts as well? I wanna make sure anybody. Um, so my thought is like, for example, in the productivity, we have code quality example, and we have a definition and implementation. We have the same definition and implementation for community activity too. We have the same definition, implementation, and all these algorithms for other models in other categories too. So, so, uh, so maybe we. Um, uh, that a higher level abstraction is there, but uh, that is more needed when we, as and when we are developing the metric, as Kevin said. But like for each model, we need this structure of definition, implementation, and the data for the mod, uh, model. We need yes, we do need each of those for the implemented models, the algorithm, data insight, and data. Yeah. Those, are, those those are necessary. Yeah, and it sounds to me like productivity, robustness, and niche creation are more tags than they are categories. You're not looking to sort into them. You are looking to connect models using them. Okay. Actually, we are using the, the whole ecosystem concept to describe the whole open source community. Like I mentioned earlier, this is coming from the paper research output here. So we do have a lot of metrics model here not just the three we already have in github we have like more than 10 like almost 20 uh, 4, 15 metrics model already already defined on some google docs so we have to put put it in uh add, add it into the github like uh, we have some categorizations so uh, we kind of don't like the the current structure of the metric because we have too many focus areas where uh, users cannot find out easily the, the metrics in it in their uh, in their communities in uh, with with real uh, use case so here we just put the simple three uh, uh, items to describe the whole open source community ecosystem so this concept it's not just the uh, like simple ideas coming from my me, I I do I, I do think this is the some some like a common agreement to describe the whole open source ecosystems. That's why I put this three concept here. Okay, that's good. That changes things. Um. Any other comments from people? I just want to make sure all anybody on the call has an opportunity to to talk about this. Yeah, Hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I joined the last uh, Asian Pacific meeting, and uh, at that meeting, I proposed that we could uh, uh, categorize these metrics models into different perspective, perspectives. For example, uh, one model is focusing on the artifacts and uh, some other models uh, 
focusing on the people and the community around the around the project or in the ecosystem, which I think is uh, can be combined with this uh, structure. I think it's see if I, the... Yeah, I think I did. We take that down as a note. I swear we did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this conversation. <laughs> Yang. Uh, it should in the Asia Pacific meeting minutes. Oh, I'm in the metrics model meeting yeah. minute. That's why. Okay, hold on. So that's that's very similar to the way the uh, the common working group categorizes their metrics, uh, and I am a I am a fan of that as well. I think that. Uh, uh, it matches with the the point that I that I was trying to make earlier, where focus areas should be more context defining rather than than measurement defining. So are we looking? Yeah, are we people, artifacts, uh, things of that nature, right? So here here it is. Me, yeah, and this I, is I don't know. This isn't I'm perfect surprised. by any means, but I think you were talking about software. And social Artifacts, or software, yeah, human, and social. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's what I mean. <laughs> so, Kevin, you had implied that that is kind of where your where your thinking was, or yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's that's closer. To, that's closer to what I was thinking. I I still so in the in that structure that's there now where it's productivity. Uh, I, I still think that productivity level is a, is a, it's a level of abstraction we don't, we don't need. Uh, I'm in agreement. So th things that, uh, things that look like they could be a model themselves probably shouldn't be a focus area in my mind. So productivity is something if 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 someone says productivity to you, then you're thinking, well, that's something I can I can measure. Uh, and so productivity could actually be a, a metrics model, right? So how, so how could we think about the work that um, Yahui and June are bringing forward with kind of this ecosystem proposal? Around productivity, robustness, and niche creation. I, under, I I understand what you're saying. Like, not a layer, and then a layer, and then a layer. Like, how can we think about presenting what Liang is bringing forward with social well, and, and technical, a, along with productivity, robustness? Like, how can we narratively bring these together? That's not just, I agree, not just layers upon layers, but thinking about ways to present it to individuals that. Are, are meaningful but still capture the voices of everybody here. Maybe there is a two-dimensional structure on one axis. For example, the x-axis it's about productivity, robustness, and niche creation. And on the y-axis, it's uh, uh, software artifacts and uh, human and social. So we have a total number of these six six points and each is about one combination of the perspectives and the three aspects yeah maybe a web graph i think we can it is difficult to use uh one one way to categorize all the uh, metrics so Right. Certainly not saying this is final. I'm just trying to capture what you're saying, Liang. Yes, that's what, what I'm saying. Um, Venya, you had your hand up. Yeah. Um, what I initially interpreted Liang to be saying and uh, Kevin's main concern regarding uh, if we're going to be grouping metric groups, we need to group them based upon specific elements of culture within a community uh, is how I saw that being said. So it kind of brought me back to the specific uh, elements of culture um, in anthropology. So is this a metrics model that pertains to the measurement of attitudes in a community? Is it the one that pertains to values, to goals, experiences, 
practices in a community or artifacts, which section of a culture is the specific model measuring, um, which could easily be a web graph that we could place at the top right hand corner of any model. And then using that web graph, we can um, organize things based upon what's its primary measurement. Interesting. And then it, does this still kind of help retain the entire conversation that we've been having in some form? I mean, I know it will evolve a bit, but. Yeah, and I don't see a problem with using these terms uh, in lieu of the definition for unit of culture. Um, you could use these terms in lieu of that, but it could be okay. essentially the same general format system. Do you have an example? Not like, you don't have, it doesn't have to be like immediately. Um, I, I think I kind of visualized what you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know that I probably got it totally right. Okay. I mean, I, I'm with you. I, I like the categories. <laughs> so I, um, and I, and I am inclined towards some organization. <laughs> I, I just I don't want to have a, a pile of 20 metrics models in a folder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I have one, uh, one thought I have like looking at the proposal that Liang proposed like uh, in the model we capture many things like uh, many things in a way we can try to capture maybe social and technical both within a one model then how do I fit that one model within that one box? It has to be either technical or social, but sometimes a model can be involve both the aspects from a metric that have a social or technical aspect. So what, okay, I, I like the looks of this thing. So what, I don't, um, so would like malt, hop, yeast would that be replaced with robustness productivity and niche creation correct that... so um what you could do like the way that i personally envisioned it was if you look at the definition of community uh for anthropology it specifically has attitude values goals experiences uh practices and artifacts so these are the things that you focus on when you study you can replace those concepts with what you have here which is uh how does how does this metric um like what is the focus of this metric is it more robustness is it like a five in robustness and it's a three in productivity or niche and then whatever it peaks in is the folder that you put it in okay this is i like this this is and it's cool because it's bringing together a conversation so <laughs> solid <laughs> so if the if the goal is to create uh, a metrics model that has utility for a user, maybe maybe we should maybe we should actually survey some users and uh, see what types of categories or naming conventions or what makes the most sense to them from a user standpoint. Right? Do they want to do they want to have a categorization based on these are pull request models. These are models that look at people. These are models that uh, uh, explore time, right? Uh, perhaps we just perhaps we need to take it to the users and find out what type of organization makes the most sense to them. Uh, that sounds long <laughs> like, uh, but, the way, but the way do need to have some categorizations for those metrics models because i think uh, if we give like a 50 metrics model in a flatten structures in our repo mm -hmm. that's overcoming overwhelming and, and for for the users they don't know where to start from so maybe we can use in the structure like uh, Liang's uh, proposal here we have different perspectives from uh, different dimensions uh, if we like uh, technical things social things and uh, we can find out and if we find the, another dimension robustness productivities we can find uh, uh, searching from the, another uh, dimensions 
that could be much more easier for people to to start from to start at the start point i mean and also we can list uh, some papers research on food as our reference in, in our repos to say uh, uh, why we defined like this kind of like what you did here mm, yeah because i i i found out um in, like the open chain and uh, in their repo they gave they contribute the algorithm they will list the, the paper uh the uh, the reference from the, this algorithm so people will uh, people will read their paper and find out why they they do uh, they uh, create this algorithm right how it works okay um okay so i i don't we're certainly not like at the end of this at conclusion i don't think but um i think this was a really productive talk and could we all just kind of reflect on this we're going to continue this in the asia pacific call which <laughs> this is it's just now it's just metrics model one and metrics model two <laughs> we just kind of combine them um so i think we'll just kind of continue this conversation um on wednesday if that's okay with people i, I really like this i think there's a lot to think about um there is a there is an ongoing conversation as well about what as as i said earlier what what is a focus area what is a metrics model and what is a metric uh and i think the i think that conversation is maybe uh happening in evolution sean are you still on is that oh you had to step off uh i think that's where we decided we were going to uh talk about that so okay okay um well we're out of time i was gonna we'll talk about it on wednesday but um i have a new based on what based on kind of following along with community activity. I've been kind of rebuilding the proposed template for metrics models. Just kind of based on what we've been talking about here and what's been showing up in the JSON files. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to match. I'm trying to match the work that's occurring in the template. So as we build new metrics models, we are following the template. So, um, and then that's about it. So thank you, everybody. Oh, yes, Venya, you have a comment? I have one simple question because the yes. entire hour has not quite been answered. Are we using ecosystem and model interchangeably, or is there a difference between these two terms? There's a difference between the two terms. OK. And that is. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Thanks. <laughs> sure. I appreciate it. I'll go do my research, I guess. <laughs> um, maybe let's pick it up on Slack just because we're out of time. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Great conversation.